Good morning. And grace and peace to you. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, welcome to our winter wonderland this morning. All of you who braved it out with the snow and uh, thankful uh, the snow kind of quit so we can all come to church. A uh, special welcome to any guests or visitors who might be with us today. We'd encourage you as well as everyone to sign in on the registration cards found in the pews. There's also a prayer card in there, a blue prayer card if you have a prayer you can place that in the, the offering plate when it's passed. Uh, we also want to welcome those who are listening in to our videotape ministry, those at Sibley Specialty Care, Hartwood Heights, as well as those in um, who's our homebound and shut-in. And we welcome you to stay for a time of coffee and fellowship following the worship service today as well. I do uh, want to draw attention to a couple of announcements. One is your blue sheet that's in your bulletin. Uh, once again, a reminder, this week, uh, starting February 14th, you can go online, and the instructions are in the back table and also on the mission table. Uh, we're inviting everyone as a couple that you, we would like to have you go out online and take this uh, uh, tool, and it will give you some feedback as well as your, your studies will go into a, a total group study. Uh, because uh, here at First Presbyterian Church, we value your relationships and know that that's important. So please, everyone, take advantage of that. It costs you nothing. Uh, Christian Education meets today at 11 a.m. after church. And also a uh, notice about fishes and loaves will be this coming Saturday, February 16th. The menus uh, posted and the food that we need is also posted on the mission table, and if you'd like to either help with the food or help serve, please sign up on that. For prayer concerns, uh, we do have uh, one that did not make the, the bulletin, and that is for Janet Christians. Uh, she fell at home and uh, broke her wrist in a couple of places. They were able to set it, uh, but they were going to put a cast, they're planning on putting a cast on tomorrow. As long as it's set, they'll do that, but if it's not, then they'll have to put a plate and screws in. So we're praying that uh, all they'll, ha all they'll be have to do excuse me, is to put the cast on and everything will be well. Also, Gail Jacobsma is uh, in S Sanford Hospital. A prayer chain went out about that. Uh, she was having uh, some uh, disorientated, couldn't get up. She was very weak and they sent her to Sanford. Uh, they think that she's having a reaction to some muscle reactor, react, uh, relaxer, excuse me. And she's feeling better. I just talked to her this morning. She's much more alert, uh, still in the hospital there. So I uh, want to continue to pray for her. And then Frank Liu, uh, we went ahead and put in the bulletin his Caring Bridge. He does have a Caring Bridge site. And there's also an address in there if you'd like to send a card. And those are the updates I have at this time. Any others that anyone would like to share? If not, let us uh, stand and greet each other in the name of Jesus Christ. Please join me in the call to worship. What a beautiful thing to come and worship you, O Lord. Worthy of to come together in praise. We are different people with different lives and different stories. But in Christ we are one. So let us come and worship our God as one in the Lord. 
Let us pray. O oh God, our Father, as we begin our worship, we admit that you know the condition of our hearts, the worries of our minds. You know our sufferings and our pain, our gratitude and celebrations, and yet you call us to come and worship you on a regular basis, lifting up all that is on our mind. O oh Lord Jesus, make your presence known to each person here today. Send your Holy Spirit to speak words of truth and hope. Help us to know that you are good, that your love is for us all. Thank you for seeing us and hearing our prayers. Amen. Our opening prayer is all creatures of our God and King, number 64, and the words will be on the screen.
please join me in the unison prayer of confession. God of unity and peace, we do live in the joy and wonder of your love. However, we find it so easy to be in disagreements. Often we are tempted to cut the ropes of love that bind us together. We very quickly move to violence and distrust. To those who have differences of opinion or those who hold different values and traditions. Other times, we take that and take it a little too much for granted. Grace is the power of reconciliation. Help us now. Hear the good news. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance. That Jesus Christ came in this world to save sinners. That he himself died on the cross so that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. Friends, in the name of our Lord and Jesus Christ, I declare to you that we are truly forgiven. Amen. Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. to be in 
Thank you, Kelly. At this time, I'd invite any of our children to come up for this morning's children's message. And uh, if I can entice you, I do have things to give away. And actually, what I'm enticing you with this morning is uh, cookies. You know, today we're going to be talking about Christ, or Paul says in his scriptures that, uh, and he's talking about the church. He says, you are all one body, but you're, there's many parts to come up with the church uh, as we are. Well, actually, the same is true with uh, cookies. Did you know that? It's not made of just one ingredient. Do you guys know what uh, some of the things that cookies are made of? I heard eggs, and I have an egg in there. It's actually protected, so it doesn't get broke. That would make a mess, wouldn't it? Yeah. What would you say? Sugar? Okay, I got sugar. Flour? Let's see. Okay. I think butter. Flour. There's flour. Chocolate chips. We got chocolate chips. Are you somebody else said butter or shortening would work. Butter's kind of like shortening. Okay. What else? Possibly vanilla. I guess it would ta depend on what you were making. How about some baking soda? Uh, and then one final ingredient, not very much, but a little bit of salt. Now, what would happen if, say, we left out the flour? Wouldn't taste right. Probably, you know what would happen? I don't think the cookies would rise. <laughs> I think they'd be just flat. <laughs> and what happened if, if you didn't put sugar in? Wouldn't, you know, it'd have kind of a flat taste. Uh, what about, uh, what about the, the chips? Then it wouldn't be a chocolate chip cookie, would it? <laughs> no. Yeah, actually, all these ingredients are important in order to make what we get as a cookie. A cookie. Now, the same is true, what Paul is saying is in the church, is that everyone is important. You are important, your parents are important, grandparents, adults, young people, um, everyone is important. And we make up what we call the church. And if we leave one ingredient out, it's not quite the church. It's not going to be what it was meant to be. So what I, what I want to demonstrate here this morning is that all of us are important. You're important, okay? Just like when we have a cookie, uh, it's not going to taste the way it's supposed to without all those ingredients. Our church is not going to be what it's supposed to without all of us taking part, okay? So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day. We thank you for these youth. We thank you for their energy. And uh, Lord, just uh, we thank you that they are a part of this church and a, a vital part, as well as their parents, their grandparents, our younger adults, our older adults, and everyone in between. Uh, are important as making up the body of Christ. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, it says I'm just supposed to lift here. Anybody know how to open these things? You have to be... Think it'll take me a while? Yeah, it might. No. I wanted to leave it in there so you know that I, these are fresh cookies. So there's enough you can probably take two. Go ahead. The first ones are going to be the hardest. There you go.
Sometimes, you know what I say, if you take two, you have to give one away. Get them out. Good job. There you go. <laughs> there you go. And at this time, I think we have a minute for mission from our youth. The soup and pie supper is Wednesday, February 20th from 5 to 7 p.m. with carryout starting at 4.30. We will be serving chili, broccoli, broccoli and cheese, cheesy tortilla, chicken noodle, chicken wild rice, and vegetable beef soup. We will also serve ham and cheese sandwiches and a variety of desserts. Ladies. <laughs> FOC would again this year gratefully ask you to supply the pies and desserts, delivering them to the church kitchen by 12 noon on February 20th. Thank you very much for your support, and we couldn't do this without you. The soup and pie will be a free will offering for our mission trip to Pine Ridge, South Dakota this summer. Thank you. You ever think how blessed we are? Just this morning, we've seen four opportunities for us to have treats. We got soup and pie, fishes and loaves. We had treats for the children. And afterwards, we get fellowship, and there's going to be treats out there for us. A lot of it we take for granted. Every day, we go down to our refrigerator. It's always full. We never go hungry. And just think. There's millions of children out there, always hungry. Our church is currently scheduled to go to Sioux Falls for the mission of Kids Against Hunger. The date is Saturday, March 9th, from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. The mission is to pack meals for those in need. It's reported every hour, 12 children die of starvation. There are over 12 million children hungry in this world. Kids Against Hunger help feed the starving people of Haiti, and also children and their families within the U.S. They keep 25% of the meals packed for local communities by placing meals in the backpack program, food banks, and pantries. Our goal is to have enough people to run four lines. Each line needs 10 people. It's an, it works like an assembly line. It, all members perform just one task. It's simple, easy, and fun. We ask that you arrive 10 minutes early for the event so we can sign up, wash our hands, get our aprons on, and our hair nets on. Then we receive a short briefing regarding why the mission is needed and how it works. When our time is done, we clean up, have our picture taken with the meals, and then we're done. We have plenty of time to go have a nice meal here in Sioux Falls and then head back home after we do some shopping. Just some safety issues. They do use soy, soy products, and there's uh, no open uh, toe shoes there. If there is bad weather, like today, the decision would be made to cancel it. Either call the church or myself, or check on the church Facebook regarding the status. Sign up begins today. Bring as many friends as you want. The more, the better. Because isn't that what God wants us to do? Help those, help those that need help. Thank you. Our first scripture reading is from 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 20, found in your NIV Bible, page 1785, or your NIV Children's Bible, page 1269. Hear the word of the Lord. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. 
Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. Our hymn of preparation is Christ is Made the Sure Foundation, number 276, and the words will be on the screen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Our second scripture reading is a continuation of the first in chapter 12, uh, verses I'll be reading are verses 20 through 31. Continuing with <clears throat> Paul's words about we are, we are one body with many parts. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker <clears throat> are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has combined the members of the body and has given greater honor, honor to the parts that lacked it, and so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. And if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. And if one part is honored, every part rejoices in it. He says, now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you are a part of it. And the, in the church, God has appointed, first of all, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers, then workers and miracles, and also those with gifts of healing, those who are able to help others, those with gifts of administration, those in speaking in different kinds of tongues, 
Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have the gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But eagerly, eagerly desire these gifts. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Spirit, <clears throat> Spirit of the living Lord, fall afresh on us. Spirit of the living Lord, fall afresh on us. Melt us, mold us, fill us, use us. Spirit of the living Lord, fall afresh on us. Amen. I'd like to begin by reiterating what our mission statement is for ECO, or the Covenant of Evangelical Presbyterians, and that is we are to build flourishing churches that make disciples of Jesus Christ, for Jesus Christ. ECO believes that our church is a living organism that we can grow and thrive and multiply. Now, someone else confirms that idea. It happens to be Rick Warren, who also says the church is a living organism. He says these words. Since the church is a living organism, it's natural for it to grow if it's healthy. The church is a body, he says, not a business. It is an organism, not an organization. It's alive. And if the church is not growing, he says, it's dying. Your body has nine different systems circulatory, respiratory, digestive, skeletal, etc. And when these systems, he says, are all in balance, all working together as one, it's healthy. But when your body gets out of balance, we call it a disease. Now, actually, that's a perfect lead-in to uh, one of our speakers that was at our national gathering in Colorado Springs, Reverend Albert Tate. As you can see, he's a black uh, man, and... Uh, he gave a quite inspirational message. I'm going to give you a part of that. He, he talked for over an hour, but we're not going to be here an hour. <laughs> um, I had to cut it significantly, but I want you to know that if you feel like saying amen, it's okay, okay? Reverend Tate said, if you're feeling bad about your church, if you think things are kind of going away, he says, what you need to do is pick up 1 Corinthians Look at those first 11 chapters and you'll find a church that's really messed up. I mean, they messed up so bad, they even messed up communion. Imagine that. He said that they took and messed up so bad, they messed up communion. Literally, there were some coming to the church, filling themselves, and there were others that were getting drunk, and then there were others coming late. They got nothing and they were angry. Uh... People were leaving the church hungry, drunk, and angry. It sounds like some of our family reunions, right? <laughs> and Paul, Paul is teaching them to come together and be one. And they need to love each other. How to be one as a church. And so Paul says here in chapter 12 that you are one body, but you are many parts. Now he uses the metaphor of a, of a physical body to describe the body of the church and, and what it should look like. He says, look at the physical body. Look at all of our pieces we have, our arms, our legs, our nose, everything. We, we have such diversity of the body. But when it all comes together, it, it's a beautiful thing. We are many things, a hand, a nose. Uh, we're not one thing at a time. Although, I don't know about you, but sometimes I get up in the morning and I look at the mirror and I think, man, it looks like I'm seeing all no's this morning. <laughs> but no, he says, you're not all no's. You're not just an eye. Diversity is a gift. He said, what if the thumb says, I'm going to start an all-thumb church. And I'm, we're going to have all-thumb music. And uh, I, I, we're going to... We're going to go out, we're going to get a worship team that plays all thumb music. I, I'm going to get a thumb tattoo. I'm going to start a thumb movement for God. I can, I can 
say yes or no. All I got to do is go this or this. I, if I need a ride, I just go like this. I have my own logo. I, I got it already. And the, the, the little finger goes, what? What's up with that? If you start a full thumb movement, what happens? You might appreciate the power of the thumb, but what you lose is the power of the hand. Diversity is not an opportunity for us to fight. It's an invitation to celebrate. Yet we live in a time when diversity is probably greater than it's ever been. He said, look at the news, how we get the news. Uh, it's set up to be a debate. Uh, he said, I just want to hear the news. I want to hear what's happened. What happened today? Uh, no, we get a group from the left, we get a group from the right, and then there's some group in the middle, and I don't know how they got there, and, and they just go back and forth. I just want to know what happened today. I want to know, do I need to put my coat on when I go out today or not? But if we're not careful, said so that sort of thing will creep into our churches. And we're going to base our opinions and our theological persuasions based on what Fox says or based on what CNN says. And we need to be clear about where our information comes from. Because what's important is this, the B-I-B-L-E. You all learned this in VBS or Sunday school somewhere. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Diversity for us is not an opportunity to fight. It's an opportunity for us to celebrate and understand one another. Can you imagine the hand saying, I'm tired of picking up after everybody. I'm the only one picking up around here. And he says, mouth, you, you be quiet because you can't even eat without me putting something in your mouth. And the ear says, oh, hand, listen, listen. Oh, that's right. You don't have an ear, so you can't listen. And, and can you imagine the body not working together? What happens when we have flu? The nose goes, I'm going on strike. I'm shutting down. There's nothing coming in. There's nothing coming out. Mouth, you better get ready because you're going to have to start breathing. And... Uh, and the ears say, well, if you're going to quit, I'm going to quit. And uh, what's that you say? Well, I'm going to quit. And then uh, the, the bowels. The bowels says, well, before we shut down, we're just going to open up all of, the, all of the avenues and everything that you ate is going to come out both ends. And you're going to be irregular for the next 48 hours. <laughs> and then the muscles say, well, we're not going to quit, but every time we move, we're going to go, wah, wah, we're going to scream. Now imagine, what would happen if that's the way the body of church operated and it wasn't working together? Imagine if the body of Christ just decided that we're all going to be thumbs because it doesn't work that way. Paul is saying that the body is at best when everyone is working together. Now, Paul is clearly saying in a vision that, in, in this statement here, that we are all different. But that's something he says we should celebrate. Culturally, we are different. We didn't all grow up here in Sibley. Some of you have come from other places. The gospel of Jesus Christ, though, calls us together as one. And so we must seek diversity, and we must feel it, for we are different, and we have an opportunity in that difference to celebrate. What if the world saw us as a diverse community of faith, but we were one? They would see that the blood of Jesus Christ is what pulls us all together as one body, that worthy is the lamb that was slain. Amen? Amen. <laughs> That's your cue to say amen. <laughs> you can tell we're, we're, uh, we're uh, a, a Protestant church that's not used to ha giving a response. And that's what Robert Tate, he wanted amens. And so Ray Reverend Tate says this, my church is intentionally marked with diversity. He says they don't look alike, they don't vote alike. And he said, 
look at the demographics in your area. He says, develop how you're going to make an impact in that circle in which you live. What would it mean for you to have diversity there? Because if we were all people of thumbs, the only ones on session were thumbs, the only ones that were uh, on uh, as deacons were thumbs, we were all people of thumbs, we would be missing the fullness of the hand. Sometimes we have to be awakened to the difference we don't even know that we had. He said, in order for us to be effective, we have to be able to understand and engage with those that are different than us. And he said the second point is the posture of empathy. Paul is trying to get them to appreciate others in their community that are different by being a listening ear to process and reflect by coming alongside them. We need to listen to allow others to have a chance to tell us their story. It's not about always putting in your two cents worth. He says, what does it mean to create a space to sit in others' pain? He said, it not, it's not about being right, but it's about being present. It's about being willing to sit next to someone who is going through a difficult time, not interested in wanting to fix them, not wanting to hurry them through whatever they're going through, but to sit with them and listen and allow them to share. He says, that's what empathy is about. And if we as a church acted that way, then we would be more like the body of church has called us to be. Again, it's not about you being right. It's not about, it, it, what it is about is a being present with those who are hurting. And it's also why we need sticky faith volunteers. Uh, our youth are sometimes going through some really rough times. And they need people to come alongside of them, to sit with them. And that's why we need everyone to get involved. Notice, if you hit your thumb with a hammer, and you're in an all-thumb church, those thumbs can't really help you, can they? But if you're in a church with the body, the eyes let you know first what's going on. They go something like this, <laughs> wide open. The mouth goes open. The mouth says, oh, my, and lets out a scream. And then the, the feet, the feet go something like this to show they are also feeling your pain <laughs> and, and, and they know that it hurts. And then your hand comes over and it grabs that thumb and, and, and it gives support. And, and then the, the, uh, they're telling the rest of your body to run, run, run and get help. When you're hurt and you're with the body of Christ, they can come around you to help you through those difficult times. The body is at best then when it experiences diversity, when it has the posture of empathy, and the third point, when it has the power of love. What would our church look like if we made the church a safe place where people could be loved, a love could be felt by all? Now, in order to pull this off, there's only one way we can do that, and it's through the power of love. The only way we celebrate diversity is to deeply love each other. And the only way you do that is to sit in empathy with someone, is to love them. And if you get tired, remember how long God has been sitting with you. God never leaves you nor forsakes you. He is always there loving you. That's what we're supposed to do. Paul mentions the definition of love in 1 Corinthians 13, the next chapter. He says, if you get everything right, church, if you get the sermon right, the session does what it's supposed to write, the deacons do everything right on their end, but if you forget to love, you've gained nothing. Because love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud, it's not rude, it's not self-seeking, it's not easily anger, and it keeps no record of wrongs. Love. 
Love is what pulls us all together as one body of Christ. Now, Reverend Tate tells when he was a boy, he was the only boy in the house, and he had to help his mom and his sisters get dressed. And his job was every time that his mom put on his gir their girdle, he would have to come behind and button those top three buttons. Now, some of you men can maybe remember doing that. And he'd have to go, eh, hook that one, eh, hook that one, and uh, hook that one. He said, you know, for you younger ones that don't know what a girdle is, well, God came up with an invention called Spanx. And uh, you don't need anybody to uh, help button it. They just put it on, and it, it holds everything together. You know, a, a little bit of an embarrassing moment for me. I had to go look up what Spanx were. <laughs> And then when I saw what it was, I had a quick click to get out because I thought, okay, I'm not supposed to be looking at that. <laughs> what Spanx does is, is holds us all, just like Spanx pulls and gathers us all together and holds us as one. That's what Paul's saying love does. Love gathers us all together and holds us as one. It holds us together as people who don't look alike, don't talk alike, don't wear the same clothes, come from different regions of the country. And when it gets hard for us, it is what holds us together. That's what love does. And he says, I pray that your church will have a community that is rich with diversity. I pray that your churches will be known for their empathy and I pray that all across your community that your church will be a place where people can go who are in pain. And I pray that your church will be known for its love. And so he said, let the love of God pull you together and hold you tight so that you may be one body of Christ. Amen. Amen. And that no one, no one is left out from coming to the communion table of our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. A God of great love, we confess that all too often we fail to remember that no matter where we are, we are surrounded by your love. And all too often we rush through the busyness of our days and are imprisoned by our schedules. And instead of letting our schedules give us freedom, we're in the throes of despair. And all too often in the midst of a stormy time, and then we forget that no matter where we are, there you are also. So in these moments of quiet, let us be still and know that you are God. And just as Jesus prayed that we would be one as he and the Father are one, we so pray this morning. And we acknowledge that it's only through the work of your Holy Spirit that we can come together as one people, celebrating our diversity, having a posture of empathy, and living in the power of love. And you, O oh Lord, saw our unique parts as a church, and so you desired us to be one body. Help us not to see our differences as flaws, but as benefits, and help us to live, lift each other up, to encourage one another, and to be a light together in a dark and troubled world. Make us one, O oh Lord, as only you can. And so we pray now that you, O oh Lord, would help us to make a difference, open our hearts to receive your wisdom, and grant us grace to mend the broken bits of our world with compassion and love and forgiveness. For so you have mended us. And free us, O God, from the things that bind us. Help us to relax into your love. And in the certainty of your care, let us pray, O Lord, that we could be the church that you called us to be. And in the certainty of your love, we pray for those who are ill. We pray for those who are in need of care. And might those that we have named on our prayer chain of concerns uh, be ones that we lift up to you here this morning. We pray for Gail Jacobsma as she recovers in the Sanford Hospital um, from numerous things, but they think is a reaction to the muscle relaxer and pray that she can uh, 
gain everything back so that she can come home soon. We pray for our Brian uh, Schaefer, who's uh, now home after having been in the hospital with a viral infection this last uh, weekend before. And uh, we pray for Janet Christians, who fell and broke a wrist, and uh, pray that, uh, Lord, that tomorrow they can just put a cast on, and uh, that her wrist is, has not moved, and that it's fully set, and that she won't need uh, to have uh, pins and a plate put in. And Lord, we also pray for Frank Liu, as he has been diagnosed with terminal abdominal cancer, and we just pray for quality of life and health for him. We also pray for Gary Christians as he has uh, began his uh, radiation treatment and uh, will continue to do so over the next several weeks, as well as Mackenzie Ryder, who also is doing radiation treatment. And we pray that she, too, will have minimal side effects uh, to the treatment. We pray for Violet Byers as she's recovering from an infection and a hospital stay. We pray that you would continue to give her health and lift her up in prayer. We pray for Ruth Jurens as she is battling a stage four lung cancer and also for Elijah Jansma as he battles his cancer and uh, we just pray for, for no more seizures. Uh, he also uh, sprained an ankle here this last week so we pray for healing for him. We pray for all those that uh, serve uh, in the armed forces in the distant lands uh, working and serving in harm's way protecting the freedoms that we enjoy every day. Assure them of your loving presence, and we pray for all those who work for peace in this world. And we pray that uh, would bring help to those in need as we pray for our president, uh, for our Congress, and, and for all those representatives representing us at that level, and we pray for them to make decisions uh, that uh, follow biblical principles and truths. And, O oh Lord, uh, in the certainty of your care, let us uh, pray that prayer your Son, Jesus Christ, taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We will continue our worship this morning with the giving of our tithes and our offerings. Our scripture today is from 2 Corinthians 8, 3, which says, For I testify that they gave as much as they were able and even beyond their ability.
let us pray. And so we pray, O oh Lord, accept these offerings we now place before you, as you, O oh God, are the giver of every good and perfect gift. Grant that they may be symbols of our love and of ourselves, now offered more fully to you. Use these gifts and us, we ask of you, to the end that your kingdom may come and that your will will be done on earth, even as it is done in heaven. Amen. We'll have our closing song, our hymn, They Will Know We Are Christians by Our Love, number 284. <clears throat> Now receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine graciously upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.